<sighs> wow. Yeah, no clickbait here. That's that benchy right there. That was that was 10 minutes on this thing. It's like God. <laughs> but there's a lot to look there's a lot to look at here. I was interested in the P1P from Bamboo Labs, and I was thinking about getting one in just for something like today for a show and looking at the features and you know just how fast is it and the software and whatever. But uh, somebody uh, gave me a shout from Two Trees, yes, and when they mentioned the machine, I was, eh, you know, okay, we'll take a look. Took a look at the features, the numbers, and said, oh my God. It was like, we got to get this thing in here. Yes, here it is. <laughs> we're going to talk about it, but we're going to look at the numbers, the features, and what makes this thing just, oh, it just, I think that, you know, don't waste your money on the P1P. Eh, heck no. You know, I'll buy this. <laughs> Wow, what a beautiful machine. But uh, the very first thing we got to take a look at, I guess, is the speed. Now, the maximum speed on this one is rated at 700 millimeters a second. Yeah, I'll print that out in front of you here just so you can see what I just said. You know? <laughs> but, and it didn't even mention the 10 minute Benchy, and I don't know if anybody knew about the 10 minute Benchy, but the SK1, which is this model here from Two Trees, is probably the best investment for the bang for the buck or whatever right now, as far as like hyperspeed printers, this thing has some features that I really, really like. In fact, it's got a lot of things, a lot of pluses to it uh, that I just, there's so much to cover, you know, and it has the PEI sheet, which I prefer that over anything else. And it has the nice direct drive and uh, it's all chained. So we've got good cable management going on. Two Trees has always been really good that way. Two Trees has been, always kind of like overbuilt a little bit when they come in. So I knew when they had made this printer and they mentioned it and they talked about the 700 millimeters of speed, I was like, yeah, we need to get that in here. But uh, I really quickly discovered that the software was good. It's fine. The uh, leveling, the bed mesh, the shaper, input shaper, everything works great. It was like, man, this is, you know, this is a little darling. <laughs> and. It's priced better than some of the competitors that are out there, <clears throat> including Bamboo. The SK-1 is like the P1P on steroids or something. It's, it's not just faster, but it's like it, it's improved features. And that's really, I think, a lot of what hit me was not just the PEI sheet, of course, but the linear rails back here. Yeah, it's on linear rail bearings, and those are fairly inexpensive to replace if something goes wrong. And that's important to me as a from the printer farm activity. If this machine starts to wear down a little bit, I can replace the bearings if I need to. Uh, Bamboo Lab and some of the other machines I have, uh, I have carbon fiber rods. In fact, one of them has a note on it that says if the carbon fiber rods wear out, you ditch the machine. It's, it's done, you know, it's over with. So having linear rail bearings gives it a future proofing right there that this thing could run for a very long amount of time and it can be maintained. Uh, the immediate thing will take little <coughs> our stormtrooper out of here. Yes, we made him. Oh, by the way, bed slinger. It's about three and a half days. Yeah, for this little guy with supports and everything on it. Uh, this one here, seven hours. It's like, what? Yeah, yeah it's crazy. Uh, you have stepper motors in each of these right here on the triangle part of this bed. So when it does the bed meshing and it checks the level and everything, it will set itself up really nicely. And it did. You know, very. First off, out of the gate, it did exactly what it should do, and it did a beautiful job. But look at the interface. Uh, again, I shouldn't be keep picking on P1P because it's a nice machine, it, but it, this is a, a better interface for me. It has a lot more information, and it does a it does an unbelievable job. This is the first hyperspeed printer I've had in here, and I've had quite a few. This one here is the only one to this day so far that when I want to change color and I want to remove the filament, it actually will remove the filament and it unloads it properly and it does a nice sweet job of doing it, which none of the other ones that have been in here have done. They've all been a problem and you sort of have to you know, be systematic with getting the filament out. The SK-1 does a it does this marvelous job of unloading the filament. Now, it takes a little bit longer, say, than uh, some of the other machines, maybe. But the other machines jammed. I'd have to take the extruder apart and try to get in there and, you know, mess with the filament, trying to get it out of there, or take a pair of pliers in uh, one machine case that I'm thinking of and actually 
pull the uh, PLA out of there, almost like a cold cold pull, and yank it, uh, stuff like that. This, you just plug it in and you just use it. And this machine's built to be used. And that was like, that was the big thing here with this one here. When it came in the door, it was like, there's really nothing to worry about. Everything works the way it's supposed to, you know, which was like, wow. And it does a terrific job. Now, we also did a test. And this was an interesting test. Uh, earlier this week, I had the machine for a bit here now. We've been running in some tests on it. And we ran some regular PLA through it and did the 10 minute benchy. And it came out a little stringy, a little hairy. Not too bad, really not too bad for a 10 minute benchy. It was like, well, you know, 10 minutes, I don't expect a really good benchy, but it was not half bad. This here is Hyperspeed from Two Trees. They have their own Hyperspeed PLA for the machine. And they sent me a roll of it in uh, white, which was, yeah, okay, whatever. Color's fine, I don't really care, but I did the benchy and I'm looking at it and I was like, I don't see one layer line problem in here. I don't have any stringing. I mean, the benchy is, it was like, there's all the overhangs, everything's tight. Yeah, you know, for 10 minutes and this, at this quality level, that's like, that's crazy, you know, but it proved to me that the hyperspeed uh, PLA that uh, Two Trees sent over works with the machine and it works for hyperspeed machines. So it was like, okay, this, this gets my attention a little bit because in the past we have not been able to really tell a difference. Well, this machine showed me there is a difference and that the hyperspeed PLA is, you know, important factor. Uh, the very first thing I noticed too, with besides the chain was they've got a nice soft loop here which was okay, but then they came over here to the side of the machine, which I really, really like. It's not, there's nothing going on at the back. In fact, I could print an enclosure and start enclosing this machine if I want to, but right at this time, because of what I run and the way that we like to work around our machines, especially with the uh, printer farm, you've got full access to everything and that just that's what I want in a machine. I don't want to have to remove a plate here or a plate there to try to get to something if, you know, if, if there's a problem. Let's talk about the back of the machine. There's nothing back here. You don't even feed it from here. And I always like to feed off of the side of the machine because it's just easier to deal with when you're swapping, you know, PLA out or when you're swapping out filament, you want to be able to get to it. And if it's at the back of the machine, like every other high speed printer that's ever been in here, had, which was for printer farms a nightmare because you're, you're, you know, how do I even get back there? Especially when I have the machine stacked up row on row on row on a shelf, it's like, it just makes it miserable. And I've seen a lot of people do some various conversions, including making a clip to put the, you know, stuff over here. Two trees went past all that. They went immediately and put a little hanger that's over here that you can hang. Now I like using this little 3D printed, uh, piece here, which I'll, sh I'll tell you what, I will show you one. So there's the, uh, I, I got this off Thingiverse and I, I like using them around the machines because I can put it on the side and feed a machine. But even with the uh, other hyperspeed machines, I haven't been able to do that. So over here, I've got it, in fact, I've got it lined up over here. And <clears throat> they also include a little spool loader that's that can bolt in the back here if, if you want it. And that's not bad. That's that's well within reason too, but I decided I'd just go ahead and use my favorite little spool holder for it, but it's off the side. There was actually, honestly, the other thing you can do, I have a dryer box. Well, the dryer box can sit right here and feed the machine. Again, with the other high speed machines we have, the dryer box has to sit back here and I have to try to figure out a way to get it in there. And again, access is horrible. So between the interface, which is way better than uh, <clears throat> what I've seen on some of the other machines, and this situation right here, it was like, looks like to me like two trees sort of thought this whole thing out a little bit and said, well, you know, let's, let's build one, but let's build one that's got, you know, that's better. That's better than anybody else's by the looks of it. You know, now the build plate size, that's kind of a, almost a joke to the industry in my opinion because it's 256 by 256 by 256 square which if you know bamboo lab you'll know exactly what that number that's the same number <laughs> yeah it was like okay i suppose it's nice they did that they they, they could have done you know 257 and said ha ah, we're one better you know <laughs> but they didn't you know <laughs> But the machine has been running uh, since it got in and we've been running different tests, like I said, through it and it, everything has come out fast. But the next problem that I've had, 
and I'm not going to pick on everybody's machine because uh, I've got one high-speed printer in here that I the software is okay. It's a little different, but it was you know it's okay. Uh, this one here uh, came with a Cura uh, setup for configuration, which was which was not half bad, and it will work. It's a little bit uh, it's a little bit of uh, computer work for you to put it in there if if you want it. Now the other configuration it came with, which was Prusa, and I. I use Prusa. I have Prusa. I like Prusa. It's, you know, it's fine with me. And it, this a configuration to import into Prusa worked immediately, worked brilliantly, and it set up a file for I can select my SK1 and I can run my 3D prints off and bring my models in, do whatever changes or tweaks I want to do if I need something, including you know uh, support that sort of thing, and I can print crazy stuff like this is this is you know off the I think it was off the thingiverse but I put it through Prusa and then printed it in a nice little you know stormtrooper hat, hat helmet mm. and so there's there's just a there's a lot of little things here that impress me with two trees because I've had I've got the CNC machine in here yeah it's a big machine it's a great price really good price for a, for a you know if you want to CNC Two Trees does make a nice one. I also have their laser in here. And again, their laser was uh, overbuilt. It was like, you really went out of your way to build a laser with this thing. But it's a fully enclosed laser machine that you might have in an office or something or a commercial setting. It's that good. So when I got this, I was again wondering, and it, it, sure enough, I think Two Trees almost made these things for guys like me that have uh, printer farms because this thing seems to be exact, you know, plug in, and you want to use it. That's all you want to do. You don't want to have to fart around and tweak or something with uh, different things. Now the loading and the unloading process is very, I'm going to say sluggish, but it's accurate. It's dead on. It works. And the fact that it works just impressed the crap out of me, especially that unloading. The unloading is really weird. It, it sort of pushes the filament down a little bit, brings it back very, very slowly clears it all out, makes sure everything is just right, does some kind of uh, weird process going on in there, and then all of a sudden the filament comes loose and slides out of there and it's like, great, you know, not like the other machines I've had in the past. Uh, all of them, including this one, has this, this little tough arc right here. Now again, there's no lid here, so it's nothing to drag on. Now I did notice that there's panels here so you could theoretically print yourself up some nice panels if you do want to play with it and enclose it or customize it a little bit. But the best thing here, and let's turn the machine here so you can really get a good look at this thing. Uh, oh yes, Wi-Fi, of course, because there's a Wi-Fi antenna. And it also came with a, uh, a small uh, memory chip that's like a, well, it's kind of like a USB stick like this, but it has your uh, configurations on it that you can uh, save to if you have different configurations or something that you want to save to a file it'll do that but it also does the Wi-Fi and as you can see right here it comes off the side which means I've got all this area here where I can set up my dryer box or in this case a, a custom you know spool holder now the next feature I want to talk about that's kind of important to a person like myself is if I have these stacked in a row on a shelf the power switches are always at the back of these darn things two trees put theirs on the side which is an easy way I can reach back here and hit the power switch make sure my uh, USB stick is in place got my little antenna here no biggie but it's right here it's easy it's an easy reach it's it's better I think on the front would be really nice but that's you know nobody does that so eh, you know but having it here is better than any of the other machines we've had in here now let's take a look at the interface and just I'm just going to show you a couple little tweaks about that interface because it can get pretty confusing for uh, new people using these machines. Okay, so when you first power up your interface, you're finally going to come up to, I guess we'll call this the home screen. And that's what, there's two lines here uh, actually graphing. And these graph lines are going to show you the temperature of the nozzle and the temperature of the bed. Uh, but right now, that's not what we're concerned with. We want to come over here to the setup and you're going to want to calibrate your machine and go through your bed leveling you know the mesh everything just make sure everything is set up and also set your uh, z up and down to get an exact you know first layer that's going to be really good well, let's go back to the home screen for a second so from the home screen uh, we can go over here and this is where we're going to load and unload also we can make uh, adjustments or tweaks to anything while we're running the machine also uh, want to make this is where things are going to get really weird. So let's go to the 
this is where things are going to get strange. Yeah, this is, you're going to open this up and you're going to be looking for your G-code or your files and you can't find them. So tap on this and you'll see a second one. Tap on it again. You're going to see a third one. And the third one, as it's going across the screen here, is going to tell you about how this is the G-code right here. This is a file where your G-codes are kept. So I'll tap on that and here's your files that have been brought in. Now, when you save your files from like Prusa, Cura, whatever it is, your Orca Slicer, I don't care what it is, it won't save it in the right spot. So you'll have to go on the computer for a minute and move the file over to where the G-code file uh, system is. And you want to put it in that file because that way when you open this up, you'll be able to go up and down. If the, I don't have any, yeah, I do have an extra file here. Yeah, there's an extra one there. But you'll be able to go up and down and find your files for your G-code so you can run them. And then the next thing you're going to be looking at is, let's just say we're going to print the Benchy. There's a little box here. You can check this off to calibrate. This gets kind of important because if you remove the PEI sheet to quickly remove the model, you may have thrown that bed, you know, that bed leveling off a little bit. Just doing something like that, a lot, of, almost all the time, can throw it off a little bit. So you may want to calibrate for the next print. So that's fine. You can check that little box off if you need to. Uh, let's go back to here. And again, the unload, unlo the load and unload thing. This is so easy to use, and it works. It's it's just, it was amazing. I, I was like the first time I've ever seen one of these work. Same with uh, in here. You can come back and after you do get everything set up, make sure you hit the save because you want to save that configuration. And that way the machine has it and it knows what it has to be, you know, where everything is at, when it needs to be there. So very important situation there. Now I'm going to go back to the home screen. And like right now, it's cold in my garage here right now. So my... Uh, my bed is at 18 Celsius, the nozzle at 16, whatever. But uh, that is just, you know, just pay attention and it's a really easy, nice interface to use. Also, you can see my uh, Wi-Fi is on right now. I am connected to the internet with it right now. Uh, that other little stop thing down below is on and we have no idea what that's, uh, that's for emergency stopping and I, I don't want emergency stop right now, but that's fine. It's there, but it's like, we're not going to be using it. So it's kind of like, this is a better machine than you know who. <laughs> yeah. And also it looks to me like it's priced around a hundred dollars less than anybody, uh, than the other guys. So that's like, that's a pretty attractive situation too. But I think you're getting a better machine with better features, you know, it's like, Wow, you know, uh, I will provide a link in the description below where you can find this guy, but I'm also going to see if I can get to a link for the uh, filament because I highly recommend with the high speed printers, the filament does seem to make a difference. So yay, you know, for them. And also uh, check back in a few days because sometimes later on we post a coupon code that will get you a further discount if you're interested in the SK-1. The SK-1 seems to be just I tell you, two trees, you hit it out of the park, this one. It's like, it's got all the right features. Now, this isn't all you get. So we're going to take a look at the rest of it because there is some more goodies that came in, well, that comes in with the SK-1. So we need to take a look at all that. Yeah. Now, the other thing that comes with the SK-1 is this, I guess we'll call it the toolbox or something here. It's got a little bit of everything in it, but it's handy. The very first thing I really like is this right here. I have one of these that I bought like at Harbor Freight that I use, but it's a nice little uh, brass brush that helps you to clean the filament away that sometimes gets curled up or stuck to the uh, nozzle. So you can clean your nozzle with the, uh, uh, the little toothbrush real, really good. So that's a good thing. Uh, you'll also get, of course, the USB stick, which you can load your files onto. And the other stick is a... Uh, it's for like firmware, for flashing kind of thing. And uh, I won't get into that because it's techy. And tell you the truth, you shouldn't need it, but they do have a flash card there for doing the firmware update and, you know, just getting the machine. At some point, if there's an update, I would highly recommend go for it, you know, but right now, I don't want to touch this. It works great. Leave it alone, <laughs> you know. It's like uh, nicer than some of the other companies. <clears throat> they give you a nice, decent roll of filament so you can build a pretty good sized project. And again, it's the white high speed filament, PLA which comes with the machine in the little toolbox, I guess we'll call it here. Uh, the other thing was, of course, was the antenna, which we attach right here for Wi-Fi signal. So you can send your project right from the machine. This is one of these things that uh, I don't care about because when I do a machine, every time I set up a job, I like to have it on my uh, SD card or on my, uh, well, in this case, a USB stick. 
and I like to be able to watch those first few lines to make sure everything is going right before I walk away and leave the machine running for the next hour, 10 hours, whatever it is, that depending on the project, you know what I'm saying. I cannot ever imagine with a 3D printer sending it over from a computer in another room somewhere and not checking on the machine to make sure that everything's okay. <laughs> it just doesn't work, you know. Now, tools. They supply the usual clippers, which, you know, we all get. But they also have a really nice little uh, screwdriver here that's a really tiny one for like Phillip head type screws. But also, they include a set of tweezers. That's something that I've always had to go and buy separately or get a little pair of tweezers because sometimes you need to get in there and just uh, pull out a little bit of uh, garbage, uh, we'll call it what, PLA poop away from the machine. And yes, this machine does poop just like the bamboo, so yeah, nothing new there. It does produce the poop thing uh, when you're changing from color to color, that sort of thing. And of course, nozzle cleaners, which are in a nice test tube looking Oh, yeah, that's a nice test tube looking thing. Okay, cool. But uh, also nicely wrapped was all the little cards and also uh, some screws, also a mounting. Now, this is the thing I talked about and I didn't mention it much because I, I didn't really care. But there's a, there's a little mount here that goes on the side right here. You can put your spool right there to feed directly into here. Off the side of the machine. Very important. I, I can't stress that enough. So what don't we have? Well, okay. Uh, in production for everything that I make, I only run one color per run. So I don't need like the AMS from Bamboo Lab sitting up here with four different or 16 different colors or something. Uh, I prefer to just run the one color and sometimes I'll run several different jobs off on that color before I switch. So that has never been uh, something that I've needed or wanted. Uh, a lot of the manufacturers are starting to lean towards multiple colors and things and I don't need or want multiple colors in my particular models, my prints. You know, the products that we produce from the 3D print farm are all solid color because that's what's required, that's what's needed, that's what the client wants. Don't mess with it, you know. So, yeah, okay, you don't have the AMS up here and you won't get it at this time. I don't know if Two Trees will come out with something like that. I I don't know, you know, it's it's a possibility, but it's just one of those uh, features that you won't get with this. You're not going to get it, but, you know, do you really need it? I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want it. The best thing about this machine for me is that it is a perfect 3D printer for, say, like, well, for 3D farm, printing or for just 3 just 3D printing period around the house it's just it's a nice machine and also it's not very noisy it's it's a little bit quieter than some so that's a good thing you know it doesn't make a lot of noise but uh, of course when it's doing that high speed you know and you try to watch it and you know it's like whoa you know it's it's really going at it it's noisy then it's expected uh, i had this running out in the garage and i could I could detect or hear it a little bit over the television in the living room, which is several rooms away from in the house from, from the garage. In the office, it would be even worse because the, one of the bedrooms is right by the office would be like, yeah, I can really hear it. But uh, other than that, it's, you know, it's typical. Uh, you just sort of have to live with it. It's like, it's expected. It's going to be kind of noisy, but it's quieter than the, any of the other hyperspeed machines I've had in. So I guess that sort of says it's good. <laughs> yeah. And I think that two trees with the SK-1, I don't see why. If you're going to buy in that range of build plate size, I don't, you know, I wouldn't buy anything else. This would be what I would go after. And fact is, uh, down the road, if we decide we need another machine uh, in that range with this size of build plate, uh, this would be the one right here. I would probably gladly order another one of these because of the price, the features. I already know the machine's going to work great. It's from Two Trees. You know, it's like, you know, not a problem. So, yeah. Hey, I hope you watched all of this and took it all in because, really, if you're thinking about the P1, P1, the P1P machine from Bamboo Lab and you're not going to buy the AMS or, you, you know, you don't have certain things and you do have certain needs like I do, this would probably be the machine that has the better features for what you need. You know, especially that 3D print farm thingy. Jesus. Okay. Hey, thank you for watching Coffee and Tools. Please like, share, subscribe, ring the notice bell. Man, come Monday, we got some other crazy stuff going on for tooling that's pretty crazy and interesting. In the meantime, we just want to thank everybody for watching again. And be good. All right. I'm out of here. <laughs> Over and out.